Hi everyone, this is Ron Williams, Technical Strategist at MIG Bank. Welcome everyone to a, another MIG Bank webinar in association with FX Street. I'm really excited about this session. It's, it's another educational webinar. Um, just for those of you that maybe um, aren't aware, for the last two months now we've uh, been focusing on educational trading techniques. Last month we did um, two or three webinars on Japanese candlestick um, trading, which is a specialization uh, area of mine. And today, of course, we'll be looking at market timing using Tom DeMott's indicator. Um, now, I will only be talking about one of his indicators, um, and there's quite a lot of information to cover, so um, it should be enough uh, to cover in this session. Now, uh, some of you asked me how to get the screen up. I think most people can already see the screen, so, so I, I will just go ahead. If any of you have any technical issues, uh, please feel free to speak with the FX uh, Street team. But my understanding is that everyone can see the screen at the moment, so I'll just carry on as usual. Okay, now the first question I want to ask, which I, I ask most of uh, each time during these webinars is, first of all, how many people here have attended previous webinars that I've given? So if you could just drop in a yes um, or a no, just so I get an idea of how many people are, are have, have repeated their attendance. So if you just say yes or no, Last one was on Japanese candlesticks. Before that was focusing on uh, market themes like euro dollar um, and various other topics. Okay, so we have quite a good mix here. I've, I can already identify a few names from previous webinars, so it's nice to see um, friends um, in, in the chat, but also nice to see some new names in here. Please, 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 I always try and encourage everyone to participate as much as possible. So if any of you have any questions, uh, feel free to interrupt here and there in my um, presentation just to make sure that you're learning as much as possible and I'm able to teach you as much as possible in, in this um, session. Okay, um, let's get started. Um, my details are, are on the front. Um, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but the, the, if, if I'm unable to answer some of the questions here uh, during the webinar, please feel free to reach out to me on this email address, r.william at migbank.com. Um, MIG Bank also have a Facebook um, page and a Twitter page, so please feel free to um, uh, also communicate with us uh, via those social media outlets. And finally, I have a blog which I uh, update on, uh, on FX Street called forexstreet.net, so if you'd like to send me uh, market-related questions on that, feel free to communicate that way. So r.william at migbank.com, uh, social media websites uh, via MIG Bank, and forexstreet.net for um, ongoing blogs that I update. Okay, now for those of you that uh, need to be aware, um, I always kind of um, talk about quickly um, some of the, the key areas which I've focused on for many years that I've been in the market. I've been in the market now for well over um, 10 years officially, uh, longer um, as well, um, focusing on these three areas. And so if you want to know the three areas that I look at on a day-to-day -day basis whenever I look at any market, uh, FX for this example, uh, there are three areas here on the screen. Area number one is market cycles. Um, and, and by that I mean uh, the, the, the duration of market moves, the actual um, time it takes for a market to actually develop uh, key moves uh, but also economic cycles and how various uh, different markets uh, correlate with each other. So I've put market cycles in, in terms of um, cycles, time duration cycles, but also in terms of the economic uh, cycles that um, correlate in the markets on a regular basis. Second to that is just general pattern analysis, uh, but more specifically Japanese candlestick uh, trade setups. This is an area I've focused on from the very beginning. Um, and something I, I always mention that when I actually began in the industry, this is one of the kind of first techniques that I was taught um, how to draw uh, market charts on, on paper, but specifically Japanese candlestick charts. And last but not least, the mark indicators and general proprietary strategies. Um, this is something a, a kind of a bit more later on in my career when I started working at Bloomberg, the financial data company. Um, I was fortunate enough to work with Tom DeMarc, the creator of these proprietary indicators that I'm about to talk about, um, and that's when I first uh, experienced 
his way of thinking and, and his indicators that he designed many years ago. So these are three areas, market cycles, pattern trade setups, and the mark indicators in addition to my own proprietary strategy. Um, so I'll try and speak up into the microphone. Some people are saying that uh, the volume wasn't uh, too high. Okay. Now, what are we going to cover today? It's it's going to be a very comprehensive uh, presentation on one of Tom DeMarc's most famous indicators called sequential, TD sequential. Can everyone hear me okay? Because I just get a few of you saying yes or no. Is the volume okay? Okay. Um, so the first section we're going to focus on is uh, Tom DeMarc, the man himself, uh, truly an interesting person, a uh, very uh, highly respected man in the, in the industry with lots of experience. I'm going to focus on uh, this whole idea behind trends. What is the true nature of trends? And then a, a little point about um, market timing. Uh, part two will focus on TD sequential, uh, the TD sequential model. So that's the one of his many indicators. Um, what are the key stages? So how do you actually understand from a basic point of view how this indicator works? Uh, there are two stages that you need to remember, TD setup um, and TD countdown. So please, for those of you that, that want to cut to, to the bottom line, it is two stages that I will be focusing on, and each of those stages are called setup, countdown. Uh, the way to identify each of these stages is by uh, a number sequence, and the setup stage is highlighted by the number 9. The countdown stage is highlighted by the number 13. So these are buzzwords which are important to remember uh, in order to understand this indicator, um, in addition with the numbers which I've just highlighted, 9 and 13. Part 3, uh, in, in the remaining time that we have, I'm going to focus on just a few trading tactics. Um, I don't have market examples uh, prepared, so what, um, hopefully uh, there should be a live um, chart um, feed where I can kind of quickly jump in at the markets right now and look at some of the markets that you might be interested in. Okay, uh, some of you asking, uh, can this be used on MT4 trading platforms? Uh, I don't know it, um, how reliable it is on MT4 tra trading platforms, but um, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a, an equivalent um, of this. Um, this. These indicators uh, are found on, on mainstream professional uh, platforms such as uh, Bloomberg and, and various other uh, financial providers. Um, I, I can give some more information on that at the end. Okay, so a little bit about Tom DeMarc, uh, the man himself. Um, Tom, Tom DeMarc is the creator of DeMarc Indicators, as the name suggests, um, and he is the CEO of um, uh, the company uh, Market Studies, which basically focuses on any kind of um, technical market uh, trading development uh, strategy, and they have done for the past 40 years. Uh, so for over 40 years, Tom DeMarc has developed his own indicators, and he's um, provided his services as a kind of an advisory basis for many people um, in, in the market. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that his studies are known internationally for being objective and mechanically driven um, by their nature. What that basically means is, and, and this is this is uh, very much part of his. Um, his mantra, his belief, that technical analysis can be quite subjective um, and that a lot of the times when you're committing real money to uh, the financial market, it's a lot more beneficial to have a systematic approach, a rule-based, mechanical-driven uh, uh, system that tells you the market is reaching an extreme point, this might be a good buy signal, this might be a good sell signal. Sometimes when there's too much choice up to the human individual, uh, it can allow mistakes. Uh, to take place. So a lot of his analysis is based on mechanically driven um, uh, systematic approach to the market. It isn't a system in itself, but it is definitely a more uh, objective way to look at the market. Now, the end goal, the end result is that, is that most of his indicators anticipate potential price activity. So while a lot of indicators which we've used for many years will look at uh, previous price history and extrapolate that into the future, um, his indicators will actually go one step further and try and um, focus more on the uh, future uh, results of price activity. 
So it'll try and anticipate specifically market reversals um, ahead of time. Um, and and by, by its very nature, it helps with, with market timing. Now, for a lot of you, um, 45 minutes and, and even more than 45 minutes isn't enough time to cover the real mechanics of this indicator and other indicators that, that he's designed. But I would really encourage some of you who, who really want to learn about something new, um, a, a new indicator that maybe you, you wouldn't have used otherwise, to look at these books, which I'm recommending to you on the, on the PowerPoint, um, as, as a point to learn more and, and educate yourself in, in more depth. Um, can everyone see uh, the screen? It's just basically uh, three books which I'm highlighting. Can everyone see three books on the screen? Because I'm having some people asking here, is, 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 is this the correct screen? Yep. Okay, great. So basically, uh, Tom DeMarc has written his own books. Uh, feel free to, to uh, review those books. Um, uh, the first book is called The New Science of Technical Analysis. And then a second book, um, he's written more, but a second book is DeMarc on Day Trading uh, Options. Um, it talks about options, but it also focuses on his own indicators and his methodology. Um, and there's a third and a very important um, book that I would recommend to all of you called The Mark Indicators, and that's written by Jason Pearl. Uh, Jason Pearl um, uh, it used to be the, the global head of technical analysis at UBS, a uh, very uh, well-respected technical strategist. Um, and for well over 15 years, he has used Tom DeMarc's indicators uh, specifically in the FX market. So he's seen as a very kind of um, good um, uh, educator on on the subject of DeMarc indicators. So feel free to, to look at these books. Most people, including myself, recommend the book written by Jason Pearl just because it's a bit more easier to read. Uh, Tom DeMarc uh, being, is, is very much a genius in, in, in his work, but um, it, his, his uh, I think it's okay for me to say, that his um, written uh, literature isn't as easy to understand um, as the book by Jason Powell. So if you're looking for something a little easier to read, I would recommend the book on Jason Powell, uh, written by Jason Powell. Also, um, he, he suggests some of his own techniques, uh, tried and tested techniques, uh, when using the mark indicators. Okay, so is, is everyone okay with the books I've just suge suggested? So if any of you ask for areas that I haven't covered, if you can just revert to these books, I will just focus on the key areas, but if you want a lot more information, really recommend that you read these books um, for, for more information. Okay? Now, I'm going to start on a kind of philosophical point, um, and that is um, things that we all take for granted. Um, and and one, of the, um, one of the things we take for granted, or one of the known truths of the world, is, for example, uh, the sun rising in the morning, uh, setting in the evening, these are things that happen without exception every single day, uh, every single week, every single month, every single year. Um, now, in life, that's, 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 that's a good thing to have kind of certain laws to understand about, uh, about day to day um, uh, movements uh, in, in the world, but it's important to understand that in the market there are many exceptions. Um, and one of the exceptions is how markets actually trend. Now, this is um, a diagram I use in most of my presentations, just focusing on uh, probability from a statistical perspective. Um, and it highlights the fact that most things in life, but also specifically in the market, uh, are based on probabilities, high probabilities and low probabilities. Um, and the high probability that most people accept um, is... Um, activity or volatility uh, within this normal distribution area. Uh, anything to the left-hand side or to the right-hand side on this uh, distribution chart shows you um, unexpected events that can take place, massive volatility which can take place in the market. Um, and I think most people are, are aware of these um, uh, high, highly volatile, highly unpredictable events as black swan events, fat tail events. Uh, this is what um, it's more known as. Um, now, a lot of these big volatility events that, that take place in the market, uh, such as uh, the financial crisis or such as uh, the technology crash in 1999, um, can also take place on, on smaller time frames. 
uh, where you just get a big breakout of a, of a potential market uh, trend or pattern. Now, these breakouts, these increases of volatility produce trends. The very things that we try and make money out of on a, on a regular basis, market trends, when the market moves up, down, or sideways in a consistent way, uh, these are things that we like to trade. And a lot of these uh, price movements, a lot of these opportunities in the market are driven by volatility. So this diagram here just explains the point of vol volatility being based on, on probabilities. Um, the probability is that markets tend to deviate uh, in a standard way uh, within the middle of this probability distribution most of the time. And some of the time, uh, we get these uh, very big, volatile, fat tail uh, shocks in the market, which produce um, uh, trends and breakouts from trends and patterns. Is everyone okay with what I just said? Yeah, any questions? So I'm just talking from a statistical probability uh, perspective on uh, what drives trends. Everyone okay with that? Okay, great. Now, um, the way this trend, the way I like to describe trends is, um, well, by, by this diagram here, which uh, shows you, um, um, w which will uh, show you a market moving. Um, but it will focus on this whole idea of trends being driven by speed. And so what I'm showing you now on the chart is, for example, a market um, accelerating at the first uh, stage of its rise. You can see it's, it accelerates, um, uh, uh, rises um, in, a, in a very short space of time. And of course, if you're trading this market, then you're making more money um, in a short space of time, which is what most people like. Now, halfway uh, through that stage, the market starts to decelerate. So much like this sports car that you're driving, the Porsche or Ferrari, yeah. or any, any of these beautiful flying cars, when you're driving in that car at top speed, you can decelerate and then still drive in that direction on the road, but at a lesser speed. So you haven't changed direction, but you've dropped speed. Now, why am I talking about cars? Why am I talking about speed of, of, of a market move? Speed tells us something about um, how sustainable that market move will be, uh, or how sustainable your, uh, your, um, your driving will be in that car. Um, and so obviously, if you're driving at 50 miles per hour, and you increase to 150 miles per hour, and then slow down, that tells us something about what, about what you might do next. Uh, it also tells us something in, in terms of market examples, what the market might do next. And so acceleration and deceleration of a market move is critical. Um, and that's why just here on the top, I put the uh, term, the trend is your friend, um, until signs of reversal emerge. A lot of people are trend followers. A lot of people uh, extrapolate the past into the future. Um, and prefer just to follow price momentum or to follow um, a highly probable move in the market. One thing I would encourage you to do is to keep in mind that that is only true until signs of a reversal or, or some kind of um, signal ever emerge. Always be on the lookout for a change. Always be on the lookout for some signal telling you that the market might change or, in, in the case of that sports car analogy, that car might slow down and then maybe turn around. Okay, is everyone okay with, with that simple analogy that I'm making? Any questions? Okay, I think it's pretty clear. I'm gonna move on to uh, the next point. So just keep this in mind in terms of uh, market direction, up, down, or sideways, trending higher, uh, lower, or sideways, but keep in mind that the one variable on that market trend, similar to a sports car that you're driving, is speed. It either accelerates or decelerates. And that is one of the ways that you can understand the next thing that will happen in the future uh, price moves. Now, a lot of the indicators that Tom DeMarc have designed are counter trend in nature. Um, so what that means is you will actually look to buy into weakness and sell into strength. Now, uh, that should be simple for a lot of you to understand, but you really need to understand what this concept means. So Basically, if the market's rising, you, most people um, uh, naturally look to buy in a market which is rising because they believe that the market will continue to rise. And so if they buy now, they will make more money in the future. A lot of this is based on, on, on the way that um, uh, on our experiences in life. Um, if you buy something, let's say gold, for example, 
everyone knows that gold prices double or triple in value over time. So if you buy gold now, uh, it's likely to double or triple in value, so why not buy more gold? It's the exact opposite with this, uh, with Tom DeMarc's indicators. You will not buy into strength, you will buy into weakness. And you will not sell into weakness, you will sell into strength. So the idea is, for example, if we were trading gold right now, uh, we would identify the fact that gold is in a strong uptrend, but we would also look for any signs of that market um, losing momentum. Uh, going back to the sports car analogy, yes, you're driving a, a, a beautiful sports car, but we're looking to for any signs of that sports car losing uh, momentum, decelerating, and potentially reversing. So the idea is that as traders and investors, when you use Tom DeMarc indicators, a lot of them are counter trends, and by their very nature, counterintuitive to the way we think on a regular basis. So going back to my example of gold, if you're really positive on gold, you would look for potential exhaustion signals in gold um, that you might want to sell for a potential correction, um, or let's say another market like the dollar, the US dollar, which a lot of people are negative on, you would look for signals to buy because you would want to buy into weakness. Is everyone okay with those two examples I just gave? So buy into weakness, um, like for example, a market like the US dollar, which is uh, most people um, are quite bearish on, um, or sell into strength, let's say a market like gold, which everyone um, has experienced uh, uh, a rising in, in, in price value, um, you would look for opportunities to sell for potential correction. Okay? Now, just out of interest, how many people are positive on the US dollar over the next few months? If I could just get a quick survey, how many, how many people are, are um, positive or negative on the US dollar over the next few months? How many people think the US dollar is going to go higher or lower? Some people saying positive. Anyone else? Negative. Positive, lower, negative, low. Okay, so most of you are negative on the US dollar. And that makes sense because over the last two years um, uh, or so, the US dollar has lost just over 40% in value. So, I mean, we are, we are basically concluding what everyone knows. The market has lost almost half of its value in the last two years, uh, the US dollar market. Um, and so, just, just by human nature, we're just basically forecasting what we've already experienced. Um, okay, now if I were to ask you the question on gold, how many people are positive on gold? How many people that gold? How many people believe that gold prices will continue to rise over the next few weeks and months? If I could just ask everyone just to give me a quick answer, just so I could get it. There's a lot of people in the, in the forum here today. I just want to make sure that everyone participates. How many people believe that gold will continue to rise over the next few weeks and months? Okay, so some people are saying uh, positive, some people are saying up until $2,000, we're not too far from that. Um, and then some people are saying it's a bit topish. Um, so largely everyone in this uh, FX Street forum is positive on gold. Uh, some people are saying it's a bit too, uh, it's a bit um, uh, topish at the moment, it's looking a bit uh, like it, it might unwind from, from overbought, over, overbought conditions. And in terms of the US dollar, most of you are quite negative, um, keeping in mind that we've had about 40% or almost half um, uh, of, of US dollar value has, has, has been lost over the last two years. Okay, now just, just for the sake of this example, I want each of you to reverse your view. So I want everyone in this chat room to become negative on gold and positive on the US dollar. Now I'm just doing this to play with your minds. Um, and to challenge each of your kind of consensus views. I'm not saying that this is my view, um, and just for legal reasons, I'm not allowed to give my uh, view. Um, it's all educational stuff that I'm, I'm kind of sharing with you here. But right now, I'm trying to challenge the way you think so that when you actually look at these indicators, you understand how difficult it is to actually apply them on a practical basis every day, because it does actually encourage you to be very counterintuitive, very counter-trend by nature. And, and usually that means going against the trend, going against what everyone else in the market is believing. Okay? Um, and of course that requires a lot of dis discipline. Now, that's point number one. Point number two is what I've highlighted here on the, on the PowerPoint, and that's this whole concept of why markets make tops and why markets make bottoms. So why does the market reverse an uptrend and why does the market reverse a downtrend? So I've just written here in, in, in black and white, 
Markets top not because of smart sellers, i.e. if a market's been rising like gold um, and it were to reverse, that uptrend were to reverse for a, for a few days or a few weeks. Most people say that markets reverse because there are smart institutions, smart banks, smart hedge funds that come in and start to sell gold. Now, a lot of the research that Tom DeMarc and his team have uh, done over the years have um, concluded that that is not true. That the real reason why markets reverse, let's say the market like gold, if it were to reverse over the next few days or weeks, is because everybody in the market is, has, has been buying and there's no one left to buy. Okay? So everyone in the market, for example, like gold, is buying. And because so many people in, 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 the, in the gold market are buying, uh, there is no one left to buy. And so just because of that one reason that everyone who is buying in the market has already bought gold, that actually creates a vacuum. That actually creates an opportunity for the market to lose upside momentum and then for um, a, a potential reversal to take place. It's, it's a transition of momentum. Everyone okay with what I just said on that? Some people are saying that the volume is not good, but I think most of you can hear me. Everyone understand that point? Markets top not because of smart sellers. So markets uptrend reverse, not because a smart institution comes in and starts selling, but actually because everyone in the market that has been buying has bought and there is no one else left to buy. Okay? It's quite an important concept just to understand. Um, Buyers can continue to buy some more, but of course, that the, the, there does reach the, does um, it does arrive to a certain stage where too many people have bought, and so for that very reason, you get some kind of temporary setback, some temporary uh, reversal. Of course, the next question is: is how big is the reversal? Is it a consolidation where the market just kind of takes a breath for a few days or for a few hours, or is it a major correction where the market maybe corrects about 10 percent, 20 percent, or even 30 percent? Um, so keep in mind um, uh, these two points that I just made. So in, in the concept of gold, is it? Am I bearish on gold? No, I'm, I'm actually bullish on gold. But what I'm saying is that when too many people are committed to one market move, that in itself can lead to a reversal. Okay, and the exact uh, same is true of a market which is falling. Market bottom, so market downtrends reverse up, uh, not because of smart buyers. So a market downtrend like the US dollar is, is not likely to reverse higher because smart people have come into the market and they start buying US dollar. No, it's because everyone that had been selling the US dollar for the past two years or more um, have committed their, their, uh, their short positions and there is no one left in the market to continue selling. Selling has reached an extreme um, uh, level and so for that very reason the market reverses. So someone just made a very good point here. Buying into weakness could be the same as catching a falling knife. You're absolutely right. Um, so what I'm, in, what I'm suggesting, this strategy that I'm suggesting, is it the safest strategy? No, it isn't. Um, some people say it's quite, uh, quite dangerous to go against the trend, and that, and that is true. Um, I'm, I'm traditionally a, a trend follower, uh, but keep in mind that um, you can use this indicator as, 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 an, as a signal to uh, the trend that you're trading, as a signal that that trend may have ended. So you can still continue to be a trend follower, but just use this indicator to maybe highlight when that trend may be um, um, unwinding, losing momentum. Or, uh, if you're a bit like me, uh, use it to actually sell into the trend, either, either um, in an uptrend or a downtrend. I prefer to look at both sides, uh, trend following techniques, but also counter trend techniques because it allows you to look for more uh, trading opportunities in the market. Also, the, the point behind this um, indicator, yes, it is like catching a fall in life when you're looking for a reversal um, in, in the market, but the point behind this indicator is that when you do get a signal, you trade the signal there and then. If it doesn't create that, that move that you're looking for, then you just completely avoid the signal and look for another signal. Because this, this signal is, is so... Um, um, precise and, 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 and uh, looking for an extreme move in the market, it is better to kind of trade it with, with a, um, a, a very kind of adaptive strategy. Anyway, I just want to focus on the indicator itself now. Um, so here's an example of how this indicator uh, signaled um, price exhaustion on um, silver. I don't have that many market examples prepared for you, and I'll try and maybe keep some uh, real-time examples at the end. 
I can also email you many examples from our daily technical analysis report here at MIG Bank. So uh, if, if some of you do want market examples, I can send many of them to you uh, because this is an indicator that I use every day in my analysis. Um, and this is a, a fantastic example of silver. Um, of course, the, the, the market which, which outperformed gold in many ways um, and um, moved all the way up to $50, uh, last seen in 1980. Um, so it, it hit that spike at $50 and then had a massive crash, a 30% crash in about 30 uh, um, a 30% crash in about one week. Um, now, there were many signals that would have highlighted uh, the potential reversal in the silver market, technical and fundamental. But one of the great signals that uh, were also triggered uh, was actually produced by Tom DeMarc's sequential indicator and a sister indicator called um, a TD Combo. There are two indicators which, which are part of the same indicator, uh, part of the same methodology. Now, uh, the, um, remember I was talking about different stages of this indicator. The final stage is highlighted by a number 13. And you can see here on, on the monthly chart, this is a monthly chart of silver, uh, we had a, um, a, a countdown 13 signal on the monthly chart, which was also confirmed by um, a countdown 13 on a daily chart. So this is basically this exhaustion um, 13 signal on, on DeMarc's indicator sequential and combo um, across time frames, month, um, monthly and daily. Can everyone see this example okay on silver? Just showing you how uh, uh, Tom DeMarc's sequential indicator and combo indicator signals an exhaustion signal um, on silver uh, right at the market high on the monthly chart and the daily chart. There are examples where this indicator doesn't work, of course. Um, there's no foolproof indicator, there's no holy grail. Uh, but I'm obviously showing you examples, stock examples, of how the indicator worked very well. Um, and maybe later on I can talk about uh, examples where the indicator doesn't work well. Okay? So here's an example of silver uh, on a long-term basis, monthly and daily chart, where this indicator flagged a, a red 13 exhaustion signal um, on sequential and combo. So when it hit the peak, it, it will show 13. In this particular example, yes. Um, uh, so a lot of, so for those of you that I haven't used this indicator before, just very simply, you just need to look out for this number 13 to appear on the market chart. And that's, that's the prepared example I'm showing you here on, on, on silver. Everyone okay with that? So the 13 appeared here in the red circle on the long-term monthly chart and here on the daily um, uh, chart. Everyone okay with that example? It's just one example, but if each of you can just crystallize this in your head just so you can at least understand the result or the perfect result of this indicator so I can uh, talk about how this indicator actually works in the next uh, stage. Now, um, I'll be honest, this is the section where I start to lose people's attention um, and that's because um, uh, this indicator, when I, when I start to um, um, teach it to most people and I used to teach this indicator to many people, uh, hundreds and, uh, of people around the world when I used to work at Bloomberg, um, it wasn't the easiest indicator to teach people about mainly because it's a rule-based uh, indicator, and there are many kind of um, um, uh, steps to this indicator. I'm going to try and explain the steps very simply and clearly, but if you um, if you can just understand the simple points that I make and any extra points that you want to understand, I can try and understand some of the questions um, now, but some of the questions I won't be able to answer in this webinar. So please feel free to look at the books which I recommended or just email me at MIG Bank and I can follow up your questions. Okay. Um, now I'm just going to hold off the questions for the moment because I want to explain the diagram on, on, on the screen. This is, TD stands for Tom DeMarc. That's the simple question I can answer. So most of his indicators are, uh, have TD at the beginning and that's just simply uh, his first and last name. Now, um, on the screen here, you're looking at um, uh, two stages to this indicator. Remember I said, what are the key stages to this indicator? There are, there are only two stages to this indicator. The first stage is called setup, and the second stage is called countdown. Everyone clear on that? So stage one is setup, stage two is countdown. Now, for those of you uh, that, that really want to learn the stuff that I'm teaching you, please take a pen and paper and note this down just so it makes more sense uh, now and after the webinar. So just please feel free to get a piece of paper and pen and write down some of the key points that I'm saying for those of you that like to write down notes. 
So stage one um, is, is called the setup stage. The setup stage is actually measuring momentum in the market. So that's one thing to keep in mind. The, the stage one setup stage is actually measuring momentum in the market. Stage two, the countdown stage, is measuring the trend in the market. So keep in mind the meanings of these stages. Setup is actually measuring momentum, price momentum, and countdown is measuring a market trend. At the end of each of these stages, um, uh, a number appears. After the setup stage, the number nine appears. And after the countdown stage, the number 13 appears. Now, someone just asked the, uh, the good question, why 13, why nine? These are uh, numbers um, which uh, Tom DeMarc actually um, uh, back-tested many times uh, when he developed these indicators uh, back in the 1970s. Um, and these are, these are the optimized results that he came up with. Um, he, he also says that um, he, he preferred to choose Fibonacci numbers, uh, i.e. 8 and 13. But when he back-tested um, uh, this methodology, 9 and 13 worked out as, as the most optimal numbers uh, for this indicator. Now, a lot of the answers to your questions um, will be better answered when you actually look at the results of this indicator practically. So when you actually see examples of how this indicator works, you just see the effectiveness of, 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 uh, of this indicator. Um, so 9 and 13 are, are the key numbers to look for when you're looking for signals on this indicator. Now, um, of course, to actually get each of these stages to take place, you need a, a methodology. Um, and this methodology I'll try and explain um, as best as possible to some of you um, in the chat. Um, if you have any questions as I explain, please feel free to ask, um, and I'll try and explain as best as possible. Now, to initiate the pro um, any of these stages, you, uh, the, the indicator looks at uh, closing prices. All of the price data that uh, Tom DeMarc bases his calculation on tend to be on closing prices. Closing prices are very important to uh, uh, DeMarc's uh, methodology, um, and it's relative closing prices. So in each of these stages, um, the price flip, which leads to the setup, which leads to the countdown, we are comparing closing prices. Everyone clear on that? So we're looking at today's closing price compared to previous closing prices in the market. Everyone clear on that? I just get a few yeses in the chat just to make sure everyone's um, clear on that. Okay, great. Okay. Now, to actually get the first stage, the price flip, um, that's, that's the stage that leads to the setup stage. You need to basically have um, a close in the market which is greater than the close four bars previous. This is going to sound a little um, um, uh, short and unclear, but if you can just understand what I'm saying, today's market close needs to be greater than the close four bars ago. So, for example, here, this blue arrow, shows that the market close is greater than, um, uh, than the close four bars ago. So we're looking back in history four sessions previously to find out if the close is greater than that close. Then, once we get that uh, initial bar triggered, we then look for the beginning of a um, um, setup stage, uh, which is that this stage here, I've highlighted in green, which basically is um, nine consecutive bars which close um, uh, nine bars which close consecutively lower uh, beneath um, four bars uh, in, into history. So we're looking back four bars previously to see if the market closes beneath the close four bars ago. Um, I'm going to say this quickly. If, if, if some of you, if most of you understand what I'm saying, that's great. If, if some of you don't, I recommend that you look at the literature afterwards. Do some people understand what I just said there? We're looking at um, closing prices on a relative basis. And to actually get this uh, um, indicator to, to begin, we need to have um, stage, a stage called a price flip, which is basically based on a four-bar close. Then we need the setup stage, which is comprised of nine consecutive bars, which need to move either lower or higher from um, from uh, four closes previous. Now, there, there are positive examples and there are negative examples. So here I'm showing you a positive example. This is a, um, a uh, setup within a, a buy positive example. Um, but of course, there's, there's an opposite um, um, of this for selling market. 
So some people are saying, um, is this for all markets? Yes, because it's just looking at um, uh, clothing prices um, on a relative basis, this indicator adapts to, uh, to volatility, and it can be used across all markets, across all time frames. That's one of the biggest benefits of this indicator. Uh, for those of you that just joined, it's, it's hard for me to recap everything that I've just covered. Uh, if you can just keep with me uh, during this presentation, and then um, I can try and answer some questions at the end. Okay? Um, originally, Tom DeMarc actually designed this for daily charts, but it is used a lot of the time for intraday charts, uh, daily charts, weekly charts, monthly charts. I would recommend that you use it across multi uh, multiple time frames. The best way to uh, uh, to achieve successful trading signals using this indicator is to use it across multiple time frames. So intraday, daily, and weekly. Um, yeah, so this presentation should be recorded uh, by the FX Street team, and so you'll be able to watch this at the end um, afterwards. Okay, so stage, the initial stage is the price flip stage, which is based on four um, uh, um, uh, closes. Um, then it leads into a setup stage, which is based on nine consecutive bars, and then up there after that, we have a countdown stage. The setup stage, remember, is based on momentum. It's looking, the criteria for the setup stage is based on a very fast move in the market, which is why we're looking at consecutive uh, closes in the market. The countdown stage is looking at a trending um, stage in the market. Now I'm going to move on from the, uh, count, uh, from the setup stage into the countdown stage. Once we achieve the setup stage, which is between the numbers one to nine, which measures momentum, we then go into the final stage, which, which is counted between 1 to 13. Here, this isn't a consecutive countdown. This is actually looking at um, each of these bars is comparing the close um, to the previous uh, uh, low or high to uh, two bars previously. So 13 closes less than or equal to the low two bars ago. So for those of you that want to write down or memorize what I've just said, just write down what I've written to on the presentation. 13 closes less than or equal to the low two bars ago. Um, this can be used on intraday, and it can be used on daily, uh, weekly, and monthly. Um, some of you already asked that question before. Um, and just to repeat, you can use it across all time frames. Um, for extra confirmation, most people wait for the uh, daily close. Uh, but you can um, adapt that. Now, the final signal is this red 13. Um, and that's what people look for um, in the market. And I just want to give you a few examples of, um, of that happening in the past. Um, so this is a real-time example of um, Eurodollar daily chart. Um, and this is basically what the indicator looks like um, uh, on, on a real uh, trading example. And you can see the uptrend that we see on Eurodollar between, um, well, uh, February 2000, uh, well, this year, February, which peaked at 150 or thereabouts, the psychological area. Along that way, we had many 13 exhaustion signals appear. Um, and many of these intermediate nine signals appear. Um, this is an example of how the indicator didn't work as well during the uptrend of, of, um, of Eurodollar. Um, and all, that's, all that basically told us was that the trend in Eurodollar was quite strong, and there were many exhaustion signals along the way, but then Eurodollar continued to move higher. And it's much like if you were using a momentum indicator like the RSI, or if um, you're looking at... Um, any other momentum indicator, which maybe tells you the market is overbought, but then the market continues to be overbought. The difference is, of course, um, that on this indicator, you do have a level which tells you when, when the indicator is, is, um, is wrong. Um, and that level is called um, a risk level. So for those of you that can see, there's a purple dashed line on the chart, uh, which is a calculated um, uh, exit level. Um, it's not a stop loss level, but it's an exit level for the indicator, which tells you basically when the indicator is is um, is no longer correct. It's it's incorrect. Okay. So for each of these 13 signals, can everyone see here uh, this signal here, this signal here? Each time that it appeared, we had a purple dashed line, which basically told us that if the market moved above this line uh, in a certain way, that the indicator would be incorrect and the market trend would continue higher. Any questions on that? So in this example, it, it highlighted a potential reversal, but then the market moved above the risk line, the purple dash line, moved higher. Then another 13 appeared, risk line appeared, and then it continued above the risk line, 
until finally we had um, a signal right at the top which appeared across other time frames and other markets. Now I want to take one or two questions on this just to make sure that everyone understands what I've just shown here. Any questions on this particular example in Euro dollar? So what you need to be looking at is for the uh, the number uh, 9 and 13. 13 is the, the final signal um, which is calculated by this indicator. Um, and you can see here that it appeared several times in Euro dollar, but the, the in, each time it appeared, the purple line, this, this purple dashed line, told, gave you a level at which the indicator may actually uh, be incorrect and then the market trend may continue higher. Uh, the signal that actually worked best and appeared across different time frames and different markets was right at the market top at 150, where we had 13, a risk level, which where the market didn't move above, and then we had a major correction down. So some people are saying, where do you, where do you actually um, uh, start counting? For each of these um, the, uh, uh, stages in the indicator, there are two stages. The setup stage, which is the green numbered stage, and the countdown stage, which is the red numbered stage. There are numbers between 1 to 9 in green and 1 to 13 in red. So you start counting between each of the number sequences, which I've just said, 1 to 9, 1 to 13, and it calculates it for you on this actual um, chart. So some of you said is um, is the green signal green signal stage one and red signal uh, stage two. Okay, I'm going to move on from this example. Once we had the final exhaustion signal on euro dollar um, around 150, and we had the major correction, we then had an intermediate signal. You see where it says nine here at the bottom, and then another nine appearing at the top. So here you had a kind of short-term correction signal on euro dollar daily chart. Okay. Now that's that's on euro dollar. I want to move on to another example. Another good example is on um, Australian dollar, and I'll end off on gold um, in the remaining time. Australian dollar, we had quite a few good examples. Now Australian dollar has been quite a hard market to analyze. Um, certainly, in, in in my experience, it's been a hard market to analyze. It's been one of those markets which has been continuing to rise day after day, week after week. Um, and of course, it's been a, a great proxy for risk trades in the market. Um, and yet, many times when uh, we have been thinking that people are, are starting to unwind risk appetite in the market, one of the markets that uh, were expected to reverse were, were the Australian dollar, uh, for, for, for reasons that each of you probably know. Um, but each time, um, uh, technical analysts or, or various people were looking for reversals in Aussie dollar, it still continued higher. Now, the, the two signals that uh, were strong sell signals on, on Australian dollar, looking at um, Tom DeMarc's sequential indicator, are right here during the consolidation phase. Um, during April, when uh, Aussie dollar um, 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 popped above 110. Can everyone see where I'm basically highlighting on the cursor here? And then finally, we had another red 13 appear here. So we had two exhaustion signals on this on, on the Australian dollar on a daily basis. Each time we had these exhaustion signals, we had a risk line, the purple dashed line, giving us uh, a potential exit area where um, where the indicator would be proven wrong if the market uh, moved above that line. So in this particular um, point here around 109.40, the market moved above that for a few days, um, and then we had another risk area, 111, where the market was uh, failed to move above here, and then we had a massive correction on Australian dollar. Can everyone see that? There are examples, obviously, along the way where the signal didn't uh, produce a, a major correction, like, for example, here on the 13 here and on the 9 here. But I'm just showing you uh, different examples here. Of course, with experience, you can choose which, which uh, signals um, might be the most probable signals to trade. Now this is on a daily chart on Australian dollar. What I want to highlight is that on a weekly basis you also had an important indicator um, appear. And this is an important signal on, on the Australian dollar on the weekly basis. You can see that an exhaustion signal appeared um, very recently in the summer months um, with a risk level up at 114. So here's an example of how the indicator um, uh, gave you a potential exhaustion sell signal on the weekly and daily chart on Australian dollar. 
Um, now, a lot of you are asking about um, uh, gold. Before I go on to gold, I just want to quickly um, show Australian uh, dollar versus Japanese yen, which is another signal I've been following for some time. I'm showing you some of the risk markets, just for some of you who are following the current example. Uh, now, um, someone in the chat is asking, so how do you set the 114 line? The good question. The, the risk line is, basic, is, is calculated uh, uh, based upon uh, volatility. So let me just quickly go back to the Australian dollar. I'll try to send you an example in an email, but um, during this webinar, I'll just try and explain to you. The example here at 111 of this, this risk line, this purple line that tells you when the indicator uh, may potentially be incorrect, is automatically calculated based on a volatility calculation. It basically looks at true range uh, within, within the um, final stage of this um, indicator. I won't say more than that. I can send you more information on this, but just keep in mind that each of these risk uh, levels, the purple line levels, are calculated automatically for you. Okay. Um, now, just quickly, I want to show you an example on Australian Japanese uh, yen. Um, and if I just type in Australia versus Japan, you can see here that at the market top, uh, there was also a good signal here at the top. Um, now, we didn't get a, a massive correction thereafter, but it, it was useful for actually showing you an extreme point on the um, uh, Australia-Japan cross. Of course, you could also use classical um, technical analysis to confirm um, the market move thereafter. You can see here that there was a triangle consolidation where the market actually um, eventually broke beneath um, and then each of these key levels um, where the market finally capitulated um, uh, down to the 76 area, um, highlighting that the risk trade, the uh, that global risk appetite starting was starting to ease and unwind lower. Um, now, for those of you who are asking about this indicator, it's, it's available on many uh, vendors, uh, Bloomberg, but also various other uh, vendors. Um, I, can, I can maybe send you details about it afterwards. Um, you can maybe observe some of the analysis um, uh, by some of the reports that we write every day, uh, but also just simply by maybe uh, reading about this, it may just help you um, uh, enhance some of your, your existing trading strategies that you may be using uh, at the moment. Um, so at the moment, these indicators are quite hard to uh, come by unless you subscribe to some of these services. Um, what I would do is to at least investigate um, the, um, the, 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 uh, how this indicator works, the philosophy behind this indicator, just to see if that there are certain um, areas that might be of interest to you. Um, and of course, if you have any questions from me, I'm, I'm happy to answer um, in this webinar and, and future uh, forums. Um, and just finally, I'll just end off on gold. Gold, as you can imagine, um, uh, various um, um, signals that have appeared, but of course, up until this point, uh, we haven't had um, any meaningful reversal. So here, here's an example of um, get, um, certain signals taking place on, 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 uh, on a very uh, strong market like gold, uh, but of course, gold's market continues to, to rise higher. So every time we get these signals doesn't mean that we should trade them there and then, um, but it at least uh, highlights the fact that there might be an exhaustion point uh, and a potential reversal. Each time we've had a potential reversal signal on gold, it's just been a kind of a minor correction and then gold's continued to power higher. So of course we have to kind of use our traditional analysis in addition to risk and money management just to uh, decide when might be the better trade to, to take on board. Okay, I'm going to try and answer some other questions. Um, so someone's kind of said the next time you try and show some other indicators. I'm showing you new indicators. I mean, each time I'm, I'm talking about different areas. Um, um, the mark indicators is one of the indicators I've used for many years um, that some of you might have um, uh, access to. If you don't have access to it, I'd still encourage you to maybe try and read about it because these are the, the newest indicators developed um, for some time. Um, what I do want to do is just end off on um, the final slide in the webinar, uh, just before we run out of time. Um, for any of you that have questions, um, feel free to email me on migbank um, at 
just one second. I'll just try and get you the email again. Um, at r.william at midbank.com. Um, remember, I kept in mind the um, social media websites that, that MIG Bank have on Facebook and Twitter. Um, and just finally, um, there's a blog that I update on the Essex Street website, forexstreet.net. So if you have any questions following this webinar on uh, Tom DeMarc's sequential indicator, please feel free to ask me questions. Um, any charts, I can try and email you charts that I've um, featured here, but also other charts you might be interested in. Um, and a special offer that um, I, I kind of present to everyone each, each time we do these webinars is uh, we can give you kind of a one month free trial to our daily technical analysis report, which features um, the DeMarc indicators, which I've been showing you. Keep in mind that DeMarc has many indicators. He's developed over 30 indicators. Um, and I've just shown you one. This indicator is based on um, counter trend moves in the market. Um, and I hope that at, at the, uh, from a very basic level, you've just at least understood that um, there are other ways to trade the market not just trend following, but also counter trend, um, it can at least highlight when the trend uh, may uh, be losing momentum and may reverse. Um, that may be a good opportunity to um, uh, reduce um, your, your exposure to that market. Or if you're counter trend like me, maybe look to sell into that trend, uh, sell into um, strength or buy into weakness, as I mentioned before. Okay. Now I'm going to end off on that. If anyone has any questions, I can try and um, follow up afterwards. Um, but thanks for everyone's attention. Uh, we, we've had a, a quite a, um, um, a good attendance today. I think we've had well over 60 to 70 people in the forum. Um, Ethics Street have uh, kindly organized another webinar next month that I'll be doing uh, in early September. And it'll be uh, focusing back onto the markets. Um, so some of you can, can maybe um, um, sign up for that. That one will be focusing on um, uh, the unwinding of global risk and, and how that will um, affect key markets. Um, so that will be focusing on euro dollar, um, uh, various risk currencies, but also gold and the equity markets. What exactly does the unwinding of risk appetite mean for key markets? This is a, um, a key theme I've been following and I've been writing reports on. So next month will be market specific, just focusing on a lot of the markets that we're looking at on a, on a regular basis uh, and asking us, ask, asking the question, what, what next? What's going to happen? And how can we prepare ourselves for future price moves? Um, just as a final point, um, I've been highlighting an important cycle um, turning point, uh, July 29th and 30th. And this is something which I email to uh, clients that subscribe to our report. Um, the days afterwards, uh, we, we had the um, uh, meeting in the U.S. about the uh, debt ceiling. Um, we had various interventions uh, by the Japanese uh, central bank, the Swiss central bank, and then finally we had the S&P downgrade the U.S. for the first time in many years. All of this market-moving um, event shock taking place all in one week, partly, reason, partly the reason why we've had so much... Um, uh, changes in the market, unwinding of global risk appetite, um, big sell-off in the equity market, um, and various currencies. And, and, and um, next month, we will be talking about why this happened and what may happen in the future. So thanks, everyone, for attending this webinar. It's been an honor and a pleasure, as always, um, sharing the knowledge. Um, and I look forward to seeing each of you next time. Thanks, everyone. Bye.